Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to get the code out of Adobe XD ready for your developer so that they can click on things, figure out the spacing, the padding, the size of it, some of the CSS elements, what colors are being used, what fonts, the actual text that's inside of things. It's actually very easy to actually do. So let's do it. All right, first up to make this work is not a whole lot. You can do it badly quickly. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to go to my share. We just need to make sure that we click on the right flow and go development. Then either generate the link or in our case, update the link. Okay. And you send that link over to your developer and this is what they get. The big thing, the education that you might have to give them is that the only real thing is they need to know to click this little view specs icon. It's going to give them everything they need. It's going to default to comments. Okay. But for a developer, they probably want all of this from there. They should be able to muddle their way through and get everything they need. Okay. Cause it just automatically puts in things like this is my, you know, my design size, my viewport. Okay. There's those images that we tagged in the last video, all the colors they need. And they're not going to be, unfortunately, they're not going to be going copy paste code, just stick it into their code editor and it will work. They're going to rebuild it. Okay. Using bits and pieces of what you've made. Okay. So like the colors, they're going to have some CSS that defines the different colors. And what they can do now is easily go in here and say they need this color. They just click on it and you can kind of see down there, it said it's copied Then they go into their code editor and just go paste. Okay. And they'll just pull little bits like that. They can look at some of your character styles. Okay. Now when you are naming your character styles, we left it by default in Adobe XD. Okay. Remember we did that thing. Oh, where is it? Design view. We did this. Okay. We created these ones with our H zeros, H ones, H twos. And then we just went add to character styles. Remember we went like that and we just clicked that button. It's gone and by default, put the name of the font with the size of the font, which is handy and readable. But for the developer, they're probably more used to getting something like, can you see there? H O H one, two, three, four. Okay. This often gets called just the P tag. So it depends on your level of uh, coding ability and how helpful you want to be to them. Okay. So you might go through and rename these before you go out. Same with naming your, uh, you know, naming the images that you're going to exporting. Okay. So here it's got a good name. I think under my layers panel, it's called graphic hyphen T. So go do your naming along with your character styles and that can help out other things that are useful for them. Okay. They might go, okay, great. This is their, uh, you know, uh, actually, where is the H one? Actually, it's only showing me the things on this page. Okay. Not my entire character styles. Okay. So you'll notice that if I go to through the pages, the colors are going to change and the character styles used are going to be changed. There's a body copy. Okay. And what they'll do is they say, great, there's a body copy and they will, they will be able to rebuild. Okay. Based on your, um, you know, your style here. What they can also do is, can you see it highlights it over here? They can get a little bit deeper and they can say you look at that. They can select on it and it gives them the CSS. Again, they're unlikely just to copy it verbatim out of here because it's probably too much detail for most people, but it gives them a bunch of the kind of the right syntax they can use. Okay. Especially for things like the font, they can also decide, okay, if I click out of here, they can decide whether they're dealing with pixels or they're going to do with points or DBs, depending on how they're working. Other really useful things is to do with size and layout. So again, let's say that this here, Okay, is my font. They've worked out they they know what the actual font is. Okay, it's this one here. They can click on it, it copies it, they can paste it in to the code version. Okay, but they can also with it selected see how far it is. Can you see hovering around tells me that it's 22 pixels down on this box. So when they're building it and doing the padding, they'll say padding is 22. Okay, and there is margin of if I click on this box first and I hover there, it's a margin of six either side. Look at that. Super helpful stuff. Oh, and it has a drop shadow. Look at that. Okay. And it tells them exactly what kind of drop shadow, how blurry it is. All super useful stuff instead of them just trying to guess it. There it is there. That's the actual syntax. I'd grab that whole thing and pop it into my CSS file because it's all done and it's in the right format. Super handy. Other useful things they'll use it for is copying your text. You've probably spent a lot of time with the client. Okay. And got the language right. And they're going to do a lot of selecting it and just grabbing this this and copying the text and pasting it into their file. Also they can find is the interaction. So let's move to another page. You'll see here, if I close up uh, character styles, they'll be able to, cause uh, let's actually find one that's a bit more exciting. So this one here, remember is an interaction. Okay. If I click off, 
under interactions, they will be able to see that I have added, there's a button here and it goes to something. Okay, it tells them which page it's going to. And if they click on it, <laughs> it takes them to the next page, which is not what I wanna do. Let's go back to my little, I wanna see one of these two things, is you can see all these different um, triggers here. And if you hover above them, can you see it kinda of highlights them? And what it does is, if you click it, can you see? It gives them both states. So they can switch between the different states and be then going, okay, what's the background color of this? Okay, switch back to the default state, which is the background color of this. So they, you might have spent a long time building these different states, but they can't see them if you just give them like a PDF or a JPEG. They can't see what this is meant to do. Same with this one. They're not gonna see the interaction um, like animated here, but when they're grabbing all the code, okay, they will be able to switch between the default state and the kind of active state. They can interact with it. They just need to come out of this kind of development mode and go back into commenting mode. Then they can go and go, oh yeah, cool. That's, that thing works, go into it, click on it, and decide the colors, look, round cap, center stroke, all that good stuff. So there is a little bit of education to work with a developer who might or not have worked with somebody as good as you in Adobe XD. And you are good now. We're getting through this course, and I promise you, most, so many designers are self-taught, and they don't, they, they know enough of XD. They'll do beautiful work, but they won't know some of these super features like these ones. But you do. So chat to your developer, see how much they know, and maybe just spend a little bit of time working through these different options. All right, that is it. That's how to get all the Cody bits to your developer, or if you're building it yourself, how to extract all the data ready for coding. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course. There'll be a link in the description. It's called Adobe XD Essentials. There'll be a card up here you can click as well, uh, but yeah. Carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.